Thank you for joining us today. We are discussing table of contents and page labels in Bluebeam. It's the next session in our ongoing tips and tricks webinar series. To start with, I have a couple of updates. Because this is a public presentation, we will have all mics muted. If you look at your go to control panel, you will see a question box and a chat box. Enter any questions you may have during the presentation in either box, and we will answer them at the end during Q&A. We are Zentech Consultants, a technology consulting firm providing innovative technology solutions to the Canadian CAD, BIM, and construction marketplaces. Our focus is to improve efficiencies, which in turn leads to grace, greater productivity. I'm Steve Fahey, based in Halifax. I manage our Canadian operations. I invite you to visit our website to learn more about our company and our offerings. Also, don't forget to follow Zentech Consultant CA on LinkedIn to stay up to date on our upcoming webinars. We offer a wide range of Bluebeam training, online live courses, private courses, custom courses, and on-demand courses. Please visit our website or contact me directly to learn more. I am pleased to have Jim Coppinger joining me today. Jim is a founding partner of Zantech Consultants. He has an excess of 30 years experience implementing and supporting technology in the CAD BIM construction field. He has published multiple articles and has been a guest speaker at Autodesk University on the topics of civil 3D and document management. At this time, I will hand the presentation over to Jim. Hi, right, thank you, Stephen. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Using me one second here. I'm just going to switch this pre this presentation over here so you guys can hopefully see my screen. Steve, let me know when you can see my screen. All right. I see it. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So, appreciate you guys being here. And today, what I want to talk to you about is really kind of two tips in one. All right, you get getting kind of a two for today, um, but they they tie together really closely, and it's the the concept of um, dealing with your sheet labels and dealing with bookmarks, all right? So what I have here is just a, a very simple uh, set of, of you know, PDF set, 13 documents, uh, pretty small one, all right? Very simple, very common to, to what we get. But in, in reality, when we're dealing with construction documents, uh, we're lucky if what we're getting is 13 PDFs in a single file, and sometimes these would be 1,300, <laughs> you know, different, different files. And a very common issue that you're gonna run into here, and I've just kind of gone over to the thumbnails tab over here, um, is notice the naming of all of these sheets, okay? Uh, they're all just number one, two, three, four. It, it, there's really no data about any of these sheets. So as I go up and down this list, I don't know what document is what. I, I literally would have to go through every single document. So when someone tells me, hey, I need you to take a look at the, uh, you know, the, the master site and drainage plan, I have to go, is, is this it? And then I have to read, you know, and, and I may even have to zoom in here and read, the, is this it? No, this isn't it. Is this it? And with 1,300 drawings or a full construction set, that's going to take me forever. It's really tedious. Instead, one of the things that's really nice about dealing with Bluebeam is that Bluebeam is capable of reading. Uh, it can actually read your plans, and it can relabel these for you automatically. So what I can do here is I can just go in and through my thumbnails, and right up here on the top, I'm just going to go to the, to the uh, sorry, Create Page Labels, the second button over here. And you see it gives me the ability here to do it in one of two ways. I can either read the page labels from the bookmarks, and you see when we get to bookmarks, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, I can read the bookmarks from the page labels. So they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here to start with is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to use the page regions. In other words, I'm gonna tell Bluebeam where to read the file name and where to read the file number for every single sheet. And it will go through and read it and relabel all this number one, number two, number three for me, okay? So that I can tell what's on what. So the big thing here is you wanna make sure you choose, you know, all the pages um, and you can do different ranges. So if you just wanna, you know, if you run into a case where you've got different borders, you know, the, the civil guys are down on the bottom right, but the architects is vertical and his name and numbers are on the right, you can just do it once or twice, right? And just do certain page ranges, perfectly simple to do. All right, but I'm just gonna choose page region, right? And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click select, the select button right here, right? And I'm gonna zoom in to the border. And you see, I've kept a pretty simple setup here. But you see, I've just got on every page, I got a sheet title and a sheet number. And what I'm going to do is it says down here in the bottom left corner, it says select a rectangle. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a rectangle that fills the entire area wherever people may put the page label. Because, you know, what, this one just says construction notes, but other plans may say, you know, extended Main Street, you know, between station 385, 242, storm, you know, you can have all kinds of extended data. So you just want to fill out as much of that area as you can. You see that that's called it region one and you see it's giving me a preview here. It says construction notes. It's reading it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here. I'm going to put a space, a dash and a space, and I'm going to add another region. And same thing in the, the, the area of the title block. I'm just going to drag a rectangle around the entire space, wherever the, the uh, sheet numbers might be. And again, I'm going to go bigger than I'm not. I don't want to go right around that C1, <laughs> excuse me, just because, you know, there may be a C11.0-A-4. That's a much longer title. I want to get the whole area. But you see, it's going to read those two boxes that I drew, right, for region one and region two. And this one is telling you, hey, this is construction notes, C1. And I just say, okay. Right? Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply that to all 13 sheets. And you see that what it does is it went through on each plan and it read that same area. It went to the next drawing and it, see it called this one, cover sheet C00. This is construction notes. So now as I go down through my list, right, and I said, what am I looking for? I was like, oh, the master grading and soil erosion plan. There it is. That's the sheet I needed to look at. That's the one that there was an issue on that someone wanted me to you know, review. Okay. It becomes very easy to sort your way through hundreds and hundreds of documents and get all the page numbers and data <clears throat> that you need. Okay, pretty simple thing. Now, how does this tie into bookmarking and creating a table of contents? Well, this is a great part. If I go to the next button right here below it, and it's the bookmark tab. <clears throat> here I can create, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. I can create, <coughs> excuse me, one moment. Has to find his water sorry. bottle. Had a terrible coughing fit come in through here. <clears throat> uh, never fails when you're trying to do a presentation. Oh yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Just Best time to get a cough. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what I want to do here is is I want to do the same thing for bookmarks, right? And bookmarks are are kind of just hyperlinks to these pages. And a lot of people skip this because they say, well, if I've already got it for the page labels and it's already showing, why do I need this? And I'll show you why. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this button to create new bookmarks. And you see that I can do the same thing. I could go to the page region. So I could have done this one first. But what I can do is I can just read those from the page labels we already created under the thumbnail. So I don't have to do that again. It's already read what the name and page number is for every one of these documents. Now I can just reuse it again here for the page label. So I'm just going to, same thing, I'm going to make sure that we're, we're setting all the pages. I'm just going to choose the page labels option on the top and just say, okay. <clears throat> And you see that it creates for me a full list, right? And these are just quick hyperlinks just to the labels. It's almost like a table of contents inside of Bluebeam, which is nice, right? But what's really powerful about this, two things. Number one, if there's anything that I, that I didn't get, you know, read the first time, you know, for example, if I go to that plan, you'll see that there is, right, when I click on that plan, there is actually no label down here in the bottom corner. But I can go in here and I can go to the properties and I can actually change that title. And I can just go in and say, hey, this is my, you know, detail sheet. No problem. All right. So I can easily rename these. <clears throat> what I really love about this is that now I can take this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bookmarks drop down. Right, and I'm going to export the bookmarks. The idea with this is, is really simple, but it's extremely powerful. Knowing which files to go to, how do I find the right file? How do I get into Bluebeam? Right. Where, where are these files saved? All of this. You know, when you're dealing with people who aren't working your job day in and day out, particularly executive type folks who just want to, you know, click on something and go right to the spot they want to, you know, see, right? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to generate a PDF file, right? And I can choose where I want to save it. I'm just going to drop it on my desk part, uh, desktop, where I want to, you know, how I want to name it, et cetera. I'm just going to leave all the defaults here. But what I want to show you, I'm going to have it open the file after creation. What I'm doing is I'm exporting this list of all my documents. And there it is. It opened it up for me. And you see what I have here is a PDF file that I can just either put in the root of, of my project drive, right? Or I can actually send this to, you know, the boss or the executive committee or whoever, you know, the owner, right? And they don't have to know if they want to go like, how do I get to the master grading and soil erosion plan? 
instead of trying to get them access to the site and get IT involved and explain your structure, you know what they have to do? They just come here and say, click this. And it opens the file and takes them to that page. That's it. You now have a master set. Oh, I need to go look at the, the cross sections. They just go here and they just click where it says cross sections. And look at that, opens them up, takes them right to that location. That is a dramatic, dramatic time saver in Bluebeam Review. And this is one of those things that we do uh, for all our clients and something that I recommend you guys do on every single one of your jobs, setting up this predefined bookmark list up at that top level where no one has to search or figure out what page or what page number they need to go to. They can just click and go to wherever they need to go. And those are the kind of trips, trip, trips, trips, tips and tricks. There you go. I'll try it in English uh, that we do try and, and share with you guys here uh, in Zentech. So, Stephen, I will turn it back to you. Thank you. You're uh, tripping over your tongue with lack of water today. Yeah, I really am. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, I think that was an excellent uh, tip there that uh, can save you a lot of time. And as Jim said, give you the ability to share a very easy to use form for the senior management to access the files that they require. Uh, just want to draw your attention to our website and our 1-800 number and my email. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to learn more about how Zentech can help you, please feel free to reach out. Once again, thank you for joining us today and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.